back in studio here at the Grand Parade and my conversation, let me continue my conversation with Archbishop Njongongkulu Ndongane. Thank you, um, Archbishop, and for your, uh, for your patience as well and staying with us. So let's talk about the transition now. Uh, you've served and worked with Archbishop Desmond Tutu over a period of time from the South African Council of Churches. Uh, now he's also led the... Um, uh, the, the Anglican Church, and you've served as the uh, executive officer of the church. You were saying to me earlier on that you used to say you feel sorry for whomever would be uh, the successor to Archbishop Tutu, and it turned out to be you. Tell me about that transition process. How did that go? How did he handle that, and what did it mean to you? Well, I think our God has got a wicked sense of humor, because having said all that, uh, I take pity of uh, a person who succeeded as Bishop Tutu, and yet yours truly was cast into that. But of course, uh, the God who calls is the God who equips. Uh, that if you trust uh, in God and the grace that He gives to the people that He calls to be in leadership, uh, that is what. Um, uh, was the issue. I think that I came in at a time when there was a transition uh, in South Africa where we were very much uh, in under the grip of poverty and, and I championed the question of uh, poverty. Having had, uh, we had poverty hearings that were organized by the, by Sangoko um, with uh, various uh, uh, organizations um, in, the, in, the, in the communities where we went around the nine provinces of this country listening to people and, and, and people saying that at least there are people who are listening and, and they were, gave us a, a, a mandate to say go and tell those in authority that uh, we don't want handouts all we want is to give and the wherewithal uh, to exist. And therefore, that's a message I carried from the mandate I had from people on the ground uh, to champion the cause of poverty. Ironically, uh, when uh, Americans have got a way of shorthanding, a uh, shorthand, they called us, Mr. Tutu, Mr. Apartheid, and called me Mr. Poverty. <laughs> Um, and those are the challenges uh, that we face, and I think that one of the uh, key uh, issues I took with our government uh, was uh, the arms deal, uh, that here we were facing all the ch uh, challenges of transition, of poverty, of inequality, and yet we could have the luxury um, of uh, spending so many millions on the arms deal, uh, we uh, we were not saying that um, we should not have uh, government should not have instruments to protect the safety of the story of the of, of the country and the citizens. Uh, but I think that we went far ahead mm -hmm. uh, in those things. So those are the challenges that confronted. Us. From what you are saying, Archbishop, I get the sense then that uh, from a, if I, if I can call it, theological activism, an activist's job is never done. Uh, yes. As you are almost in activist, uh, you're always in activist mode. As mm. soon as this struggle has advanced to a certain degree, doesn't even have to be completed, advanced to a certain degree, new struggles emerge. And I suppose this would be true because both you and Archbishop Tutu championed, for example, the whole issue around a relook of how the church views the LGBTQIA uh, community in South Africa. And as late as about two, three years ago, you were still talking about this issue. Why was this an important issue for you uh, to align yourself uh, with Archbishop Desmond Tutu on? I think what informs us is our theology. Uh, which begins with the fact that we are created in God's image and each person created uh, in God's image has got an inherent dignity and worth 
and 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 the dignity of the person is uh, what matters and therefore the issues of uh, sexual orientation uh, play uh, a minor role in terms of seeking a distinction of, of between people because um, in the scheme of things uh, God created us uh, in God's image uh, with dignity and worth and so the whole question of a person's human rights uh, is a right that you have as a person mm. nothing else taken into co into consideration and of course uh, there's that passage in scripture which says that uh, there's neither a Jew nor a Gentile uh, because we're all one in Christ they're neither gay nor straight because we're all one in Christ It's that unity that has been affirmed uh, by God uh, as he has created us uh, in his image and restored us uh, by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. At that period that I referred to in 2018, you were speaking during the period when uh, you, we were laying to rest the former dean uh, of the uh, cathedral, St. George's Cathedral, who had passed on at, at that particular time. You said at that time um, we need to move beyond talking and start acting, particularly when, when it comes to, in reference to the Anglican Church, that was the challenge that you were throwing out. But it's not a challenge just for the Anglican Church, it's a challenge for all of South Africa. We can have that progressive constitution founded on human rights and equality and justice for all, but it's a different matter when it comes to the lived reality, uh, particularly of the LGBTQIA community. Tell me, in your observation, has that exhortation to action been heeded firstly in the Anglican Church in the church in broad uh, the broader church in South Africa but in South African society as well well they say like a tortoise mighty tortoise move the church of God um, I think there are openings here and there uh, and there are uh, hesitancy uh, somewhere. I think the whole question is on impl implementation and of course uh, people's different takings uh, in terms of um, uh, scripture, some scripture passages which uh, they tend to quote. Uh, forgetting the fundamental area, fundamental point that we are created in God's image uh, with dignity and worth and, and therefore, it's in the implementation mm. uh, that this is most important. And so there are strides, uh, positive signs in certain areas. In certain uh, areas, we seem to be marking time. Yeah. Finally, um, Archbishop Ndungane, let me ask you about marrying the concepts of Pan-Africanism with, you know, your, your what I've called theological activism uh, uh, that, that uh, you know, you and Archbishop Tutu are perhaps best known uh, examples of. How difficult is it to, you know, style yourself and also champion pan-Africanism while at the same time taking this particular posture? What I'm asking is many would say it was easier uh, when the people we were opposing were colonialists, uh, Africans, or not opposing as such, but critiquing, let's say that, critiquing where colonialists and apartheid, it's a different story. The, ta the, the label of you're a sellout, uh, you are sponsored by the West, is quite easy uh, post the whole issue of liberation and in post-apartheid South Africa, as we are seeing, for instance, in some of the narratives coming out around Archbishop Tutu. The two, I imagine, live side by side. The humanity of Africans, also their value looked at through the theological lens. It does indeed, uh, because I think we've had a journey, I think, on the political front. I mean, it started with the Kwame Nkrumahs of this world, uh, where um, he was announcing the whole thing uh, about us, um, working together in the continent and of course in South Africa the champion was uh, Mangali Sosobukwe uh, when he um, formed the Pan-Africanist Congress and, and working together in that kind of way. 
So it's 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 um, uh, on the political front, we have had uh, the Julius Nyerere's and 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 those other figures, uh, Sekoturas were uh, advocating that. On the theological front, we had uh, various theologians talking about an African theology, which was uh, actually uh, making us uh, belong. Uh, as people created by God uh, with dignity and worth and are championing the fact that we as Africans have got a, a place um, in God's world and therefore they, the ideas seem to uh, be working side by side and I think that when I was at theological college in, Al in Alice we were challenged by the Steve Biggers of this world um, in terms of uh, a relevant theology uh, for the struggles of of, um, of, of South Africa. Mm -hmm. Hence, uh, the whole issues of uh, black theology, uh, Sabiel and Dwasas of this world uh, who were championing that, uh, the Alan Busaks of this world who championed that. So these are the ideas that work side by side yeah. uh, in terms of uh, building unity uh, in the in our continent.